This video was adapted from an article written by Amber Winston on mash.com. When presented with the opportunity to compare the ribs at Texas Roadhouse and Chili's, I jumped at the chance. Here are the results of this ultimate showdown. Starting with a simple analysis of the two menus, Texas Roadhouse and Chili's ribs run around the same price, though the latters are a bit pricier. For a full rack of ribs at Texas Roadhouse, expect to pay about $23 before taxes and about $18 for a half rack. As for Chili's, you'll pay about $25 for your full slab and about $19 for a half slab. The difference is only a couple of dollars, but it's ultimately difficult to justify Chili's higher price point. Either way, you'll pay in the $15 to $25 range for ribs at either restaurant, depending on the size that you choose. And you'll also get two sides with the rib entree at either spot. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that Texas Roadhouse also offers an appetizer portion of ribs, known as a sidekick, for about $12. Chili's also offers ribs as an appetizer, but only when you order it as part of the smokehouse combo at the heftier price of about $20. Texas Roadhouse's website doesn't specify exactly how many ribs are offered in his deal, but it should probably be comparable to a half rack. When comparing and contrasting these ribs, I noticed an immediate difference. Specifically, Texas Roadhouse packed tons of meat, while Chili's were unbearably thin. Upon the first bite, I quickly discovered that Texas Roadhouse's ribs also take the cake when it comes to texture, as they were deliciously meaty and melt-in-your-mouth tender. There was also little to no gristle. Chili's ribs, on the other hand, are downright embarrassing. They were so tough and overcooked that I had to use muscle to separate the meat from the bone. Maybe this was just a bad batch, and that honestly better be the case as the texture was just plain awful. But while Texas Roadhouse easily takes the crown for best texture in this rib showdown, I do have a bone to pick, quite literally. For some reason, every bite seemed to contain a small piece of bone, and this made for a rather unpleasant experience. The texture of the ribs was delightful, but those darn bones put a damper on the whole thing. I've sampled these ribs several times before and don't remember having a problem with them, so maybe it was just this one batch. Regardless, I felt that it was worth mentioning, especially if you plan to order these ribs for young children. Won't somebody please think of the children? When comparing the sauces of these ribs, I found both restaurants to have yummy, yet very different selections. Texas Roadhouse's sauce was very sweet and wasn't the least bit spicy. It had a subtle smokiness to it that paired beautifully with some sugary overtones. With that said, there simply wasn't enough of it actually on the ribs. To be clear, Texas Roadhouse does ask if you want extra sauce when you order online. And normally I would have jumped at the chance to have it added and perhaps you might feel the same way. But for the purposes of this taste test, I wanted to report how the ribs are served without all the fancy extras. With that said, if the sauce is one of the most important parts of ribs to you, then I'd recommend that you always ask for extra from Texas Roadhouse, because the ribs aren't quite as flavorful without it. Now, onto chili sauce, which wasn't too bad. At first taste, though, I didn't like it, but as I kept on eating, it grew on me. The restaurant offers Texas dry rub and honey chipotle flavors, but I kept it classic by opting for the house barbecue sauce, which featured a very pepper-forward taste paired with sweet undertones. It also has a mild spiciness that lingered a bit on my tongue, and... While the sauce wasn't as pleasant as Texas Roadhouse's, it did pair nicely with the char of the rib meat. Anyone who prefers a spicier barbecue sauce over a sweeter one is likely to love Chili's version. Did somebody say baby back ribs? Hmm? Hmm? When comparing the size of the ribs, both restaurants' offerings seem to be roughly the same portion, at least in terms of the length. Still, I couldn't help but feel slightly cheated by Chili's. The Texas Roadhouse ribs were way meatier, and because of that, it just felt like my dollars were better spent there. This is especially true considering that Chili's ribs cost more, even though they're thinner and less tasty. Not to mention that the batch that I got was severely undercooked. Still, I would say that by looks alone, one slab doesn't necessarily seem to be more substantial than the other. The amount of meat packed on each bone is where the two differ, which allows Texas Roadhouse to win out in the portion category. So who's the ultimate winner of our saucy rib smackdown? I won't belabor the reveal because without a doubt, it's Texas Roadhouse. They're not perfect though, especially when you consider the lack of sufficient barbecue sauce and those pesky little bones that kept cropping up in each bite. Nevertheless, I truly did enjoy them. They were very meaty and substantial. And if there were just a little more sauce on them, they would have been pretty much perfect. Chili's ribs, on the other hand, were a bit of a disaster and I simply can't recommend ordering them. They were thin, horribly overcooked, and overall, just bad. But they weren't the worst ribs in the world, and that's thanks to the sauce. 
Though I still don't prefer it over Texas Roadhouse's sauce, I must admit it has a unique flavor that is further complemented by the charred meat. Overall, Texas Roadhouse reigns supreme when it comes to delicious chain restaurant ribs. Their meaty and tender texture makes for a satisfying meal, just so long as you don't forget the extra sauce.